Separation or cooperation. We deal with this really all the time and I don't think we really actually consider it. You know, how do the infinite energies all around us want, to live, want us to live? Do we want to be separated or do we want to have connection with all sorts of things? And we're going to go through that. And this presentation is not what you, most people would probably think it is. We're talking about things that we must consider. We have to consider to be happier and healthier. So I'm asking that y'all stay with me, pay attention. Don't fall asleep with those big pretty eyeballs, Antoine. Let's just do it. Let's just begin at the foundation of our experience, right? We all went to public schools or some of us went to private schools, but they're basically the same, right? We start off with massive division. We start off with age division automatically. Somebody younger or older, nah, you get in your own group. We separate kids from how well they memorize stuff. Oh, well, they're in the advanced class, so you're in the dumb class. You know, we automatically start doing that at a very young age and obey, obey, obey. You know, if you read the original documents when we started creating the public school system, it was designed to create workers, people who instantly obeyed. So when the bell rings, bam, you know to get up. You have to ask and beg to go to the bathroom. You have to respect authority on a massive scale just how they design our prisons. Like that is how they were formed. And that is what they had in mind when they began the public school systems. So we started this division right out of the gate. One thing that creates more division is there's zero emotional education. How do we deal with all this anxiety that we have? How do we deal with it? We're not taught that. We're not taught how to properly communicate, how to listen to other people, how to effectively articulate our own thoughts. Is that taught? You know, our parents only have a little sliver of time with us. So they can't teach us everything. Not unless you're homeschooled. You just don't have it. So we go through this life uh, being kind of pissed off at other people because we're not able to communicate effectively and clearly. And it creates further separations. And how about uh, achievement? Like achievement in relationships, achievement in anything uh, outside of memorization. It's not really taught at all. So we create this system of workers and we do not promote dreamers that take action. It just doesn't happen. You hear, oh, he's just a dreamer. I mean, we've heard that when we were kids. But dreamers make everything happen. The dreamers that take action are the ones that create everything that we use. But they're really frowned upon. Really frowned upon. So does that benefit us? Do we, can we even imagine how that can benefit us? I don't think so. How about food? Food really separates us. You know, this is a, uh, from an early age, I have very distinct memories of my father, uh, not my biological father, the man I call my father, you better eat everything off that plate. Don't you get up out from this table until you eat everything. And he learned that, so that's a learned behavior. And then I am taught that I need to be gluttonous. Hey, I'm full. Like, I'm not hungry anymore. Like, I need to, my body's telling me I need to stop eating. But no, boy, you better eat that. I think everybody has experienced that to some degree or another. And then that starts to create a separation from our understanding of how our own body works. Right out of the gate. You know, and then we look at people that are uh, big fatties and we say, oh, you fat ass, I don't want to be anywhere around y'all. You know, we have that separation too. I mean, how many of us when we were kids and in our 20s, Hell, some of us, even in our adulthood, just separate ourselves from somebody that we would, behind closed doors and with our friends, just call a fat ass. I don't want to be around that fat ass. They don't have any self-respect for themselves. Like, we create these separations automatically. We allow all of these poisonous things to be in our food, and most people are aware of them, and most people don't care. But... We separate ourselves from other countries and how they view us and how we view them. And they make almost everything that we eat is illegal in Europe and most other countries around the world. But why do we care? You know, with the cancer rates through the roof, Andrew's mom just had cancer. My mom just had cancer. 
All, I mean, everybody is getting cancer and all these physical ailments. Huh. But we're creating these divides. And do we want to live with the benefits of healthy food or do we just um, want to continue poisoning ourselves? And I see like health, super healthy people being very condescending to the ones that don't. And I think there needs to be a higher level of education so we can really start having those conversations to stop the poison. Like it wouldn't be that difficult. And I think that's how we would all want to live. Mother Nature is one of the biggest things. Nobody knows where their food comes from. Like there's been countless times kids have been out here and we take them and they feed the cows or they, the sheep and they're just amazed to think that that's going to be a hamburger. Like in their mind, the hamburger comes from the meat section at Walmart. They, they just don't know. They never thought that was a moo cow. It's, it's pretty sad. And to have a relationship with your food, to understand that it is not right to send our food our cows through this, this nasty system and uh, the milk cows where they can't turn around or even move and, and to know that we're taking in all of that negative energy. And just to be disconnected. I mean, how many people go outside and walk around barefooted and feel the earth's vibration? How many of us? I mean, we do it here a lot. All of y'all that participate. I think it's pretty important that we re-establish on a broad scale, a massive scale, our reconnection to Mother Nature. It's vital. It's what we are. How about the uniforms of separation? We got the doctors in the white coat, the police that now, you know, uh, law enforcement instead of protect and serve. Uh, they got their military get up. Lawyers have their suits. Schools have their dress codes or uniforms. And, you know, we got the hood guys with their saggy pants. Everybody has a uniform that they're wearing. I heard a quick story of uh, somebody, they were visiting with me in the study, and they just went off on a tangent about uh, how uh, they just hated serving these people that had the pants hanging down past their butt. And I just said, well, have you ever thought about it? That's their uniform. Like where they live in that circle, if they're not dressed that way, then they're probably ostracized. So to us, it seems weird and stupid. Don't you have a belt, you moron? You know, I mean, that's what most people think. But if you just happen to think, oh, well, they're going to be, they don't care what you think. They just care what their immediate friends right where they live think. If we start to try to understand other people and what they're thinking and how they're acting and why they're doing a certain thing, maybe we can shrink some of these crazy divides that exist between us. And not automatically trusting an authority figure just because they have a white coat on or because they're dressed in blue. We think we automatically should trust and uh, love them. We have uh, two former police officers in here today. Now, were they good police officers? I don't know. They're good guys now. Yeah, I don't know. They never pulled me over. <laughs> yeah, how about I'm smart, I'm dumb. How many of us go, man, I, I can't hang out with that person. They're just too stupid. They're just stupid. I can't hang around dumb people, right? <laughs> I mean, that's just, it's, it's silly. You know, our perceptions divide us because almost everybody thinks they're the smartest person in the room. Almost everybody individually. It's like most younger men think they're the toughest guy. You know, I, I know I could definitely take that guy. You know, most guys think that even though they go get their ass beat if they went outside and tried to fight them. You know I mean? It's, just, it's kind of stupid stuff. We have so many divides amongst us, and I think if we, like, I have some rent houses in the hood, and most of those people are pretty smart. Like, they're, they're really smart. They don't have a good vocabulary, they can't really have a coherent sentence, and, but they're pretty damn smart. They're clever. They know how to maneuver uh, the system. They know how to stay safe and survive. Where a lot of people sitting right here would not survive in that scenario because they're smarter than you. They've adapted. But business people with high levels of uh, a very specific intelligence. I have a bunch of these friends. And they're emotional, they're emotionally retarded. <laughs> like they just have problems. But they're super smart in those, those some areas. But you go put them with uh, somebody in the ghetto for a week and, and they're, they're gonna have a tough time. <laughs> they're gonna have a tough time. It's just a, there's a masterful way to us to consider 
everybody, we all share this planet, we all share this air, we all can benefit each other. We just can. We have these economic distinctions that really crack me up because most people don't understand history. They just don't. We create this inability to relate. We have this class envy. You know, they have something, and I want that something, but I don't want to do any of the risk, any of the work for it. I just want it. I want what they have. And I should be able to tell everybody, and my politicians I vote for should be able to tell them how to use their money that they risk everything for. You know, I've made some pretty big risk in my life, like massive. And if they didn't work out, I'd have been destitute. I mean, my mom would have probably let me move in with her. I know she would, but it, that would have been embarrassing. Is my risk, which turns into my currency, something that somebody else should take because they believe my money should be spent in a way that they feel appropriate? I don't know, it's an interesting question to consider, but it starts to create a lot of pissed off people, and every time it gets over the top, the civilization collapses every single time, no exceptions. There's none. There's not one scenario where taking from achievers ever leads to a better outcome. It just doesn't. Now I'm talking, I'm not talking about capitalism in a way where we have these big corporations and they're they're prime evil. I'm talking about just people, small business, even small to big business, but not the uh, corporate fascist. Uh, dictators that, you know, the corporations merge with the politicians. I'm not talking about that. That's, that's just pure evil. But it always leads to that. It always leads to that. And we see it happening right now with this theft running rampant everywhere from homes being crazy burglarized all through the, uh, the United States, from like Beverly Hills. We did, with that NFL player I just read this morning, I forget his name, a top NFL pick, he gets uh, shot. In San Francisco. Like, I mean, it's just happening nonstop. What are we doing? Like, like what are we really doing? You know, well, this is a big problem, too. I get this almost every time I leave the country. But, you know, my country's better than yours. It's like saying my dad can beat up your dad. You know, <laughs> like, that's just it's crazy. I remember the first time I went to Italy, my dad said, son, you just better be, you know, be, be safe. Be careful. I'm like, it's Italy. <laughs> like, what, what's the problem? Uh, it, it's, it's pretty strange, the mindset of a lot of people. A lot of people in this country think Russia, North Korea, Syria, Iran, Libya, China. Oh, those are bad people. Pretty sure if we got dropped off in any of those countries, we'd instantly make friends and they would instantly help us. That's probably a fact. It is their tyrannical natures of their government that we really don't like. And we separate ourselves, you know, like uh, going to the Middle East. Uh, well, we got a couple of us have been to the Middle East uh, quite a few times in this room. Well, when in Rome, you know, I like to wear the get up and put the little hat, the little headgear on and just go around and be with them. They were just, and they knew for sure I had no business wearing the get up that they were wearing, but they thought it was a sign of respect. And man, they were just as friendly as they could be. They helped me do everything. They didn't even give me a lighter to smoke my magical cigars. You know, it was, it was just fantastic. But we separate ourselves in that way by these imaginary borders. It is, it is something, how we, how we judge. We need to start recognizing that, huh? How about color, creed, your ethnicity? You know, if you're a different color, does that mean you're a different type of human? You know, I'm kind of whitish. You're a little darker than me. You know, I mean, are we the same human? Antoine, shit, he's a lot different color than I am. Are we not the same kindred spirit? A lot of people just instantly say no, because we're different. I think we, let me just ask it this way, would we be better off not thinking that way? Would the country and the world be a little bit better? And I believe exactly this. I can't tell y'all how many times I have listened to Martin Luther King's speech. Like, I just love it. It's one of the best things ever said to a crowd, ever. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. That applies not only for color, but it applies for everything. Character, character, character. It's everything. And when we talk about character, would y'all prefer to have a pilot who was first in their class, or one that was substandard, and not a very good pilot, but they were hired because they were 
the right sexual orientation, they were the right color for the narrative, they were anything else. Would you rather have the best pilot or one that was hired because they said, oh, we need more of this kind of person? For me, I'm going to want the one that really knows how to fly the plane. I don't care if you're Mexican, you're black, you're a giant like Chuck. I mean, like anything. I don't care. If he's the best, I want him. I don't want to trust my wife and me and people I love to be on a plane with somebody that was hired because whatever reason. I want the best. I think everybody else does too. We should really consider that. I think it's a, we should practice the art of why are we creating these divisions? You know, if you're not the best pilot, well, maybe you should go take the test again. You know, maybe you should study a little harder. Maybe you should, we should remember what Martin Luther King says and judge people by their character, their ability. That seems to make a lot more sense, but we've kind of lost that common sense and we create these artificial, ignorant re separations. How about sex? Like, sex is a big deal. It's big, you know, that gay people just must be gay. <laughs> you know I mean? no, no thanks, I don't want to be around those people. I don't want to be around, you know, my buddy here or... They're gay. That seems weird to me. Uh, lesbians must be weird too. Is there a healthy balance? Like whether it's politics, religion, sexual orientation, all of the different belief systems we have, if we're forcing those onto other people, that's a healthy boundary we probably shouldn't cross. Like I, I don't want Ryan to come in here and start telling me his uh, religious beliefs and if I don't believe the way he does, I'm gonna burn in hell. I think that's kind of inappropriate. I think, uh, I think drag queens teaching our children that that's okay is a problem. It's a big problem. We should have healthy boundaries. We should respect each other in healthy ways. And who cares what your sexual orientation is? What you do behind your bedroom door is none of my business. None. As long as you're not pushing it uh, out and making it uh, an absurdity which we've done, and it's pretty disturbing. Democracy, majority rules, I don't know if y'all know, but y'all can hear a lot of crap about our founding fathers and how they just love democracy. That is a lie. All you have to do is go read a little bit. You can read the letters from Thomas Jefferson and John Adams and Madison, and they really despise democracy. That's why we have a constitutional republic. We do not live in a democracy. A constitutional republic is sort of like a democracy. And now even in our dictionaries, they, they start to combine the two, which is not how it originally was. A constitutional republic. So we separate ourselves with these two false choices and two false narratives, and then we separate ourselves again. Y'all are so different. You're a Republican, you're a Democrat. When we're just voting for the same puppet master because it doesn't matter who gets in. It just doesn't. They're all the same. They all do the same thing. They all want to go to war. They all want to kill young boys. They all want to just take away our freedoms. They just do. It's what they do, no matter what party. But we keep allowing these separations because we believe what the tell a vision told us. It's really disturbing. So would it be more enjoyable to have reasonable conversations with people? Ones where we're not so easily offended. Oh, they're not a Democrat? I can't talk to them. They're not a Republican? They must be just, ugh, they're stupid. That's kind of crazy. This goes with those religious beliefs too. You now you're ostracized for your faith a lot. How about ragheads? They pray five times a day. Isn't that weird? Because I've heard this when I was growing up. Call them ragheads. And I just thought that was what they were called. Like, I just thought that's what they were. Isn't that the craziest thing? Like, that's crazy. I remember being told if I didn't believe in Jesus the way you wanted me to believe, you're going to hell, boy. You're going to hell. You better stop that. You're going to hell. I think it's pretty sad and I think it's really stupid because we could benefit from a lot of religious beliefs and take nuggets away from everything and all people. Like, we really can have some, uh, some better livelihood. We can have some better uh, engagement. How about personalities that are different? I think everybody will agree Chuck has a wild personality. He's loud. He's boisterous. He likes to interrupt. He's different than 
everybody else, right? But he's the best guy. He's a super kind, very loyal, good person. He is a stand-up dude. So because somebody has a different personality than uh, we like, does that mean we should just ignore them and never even attempt to make a relationship with them? You know? I don't like wearing my hat like yours, that straight brim. Don't like it. Should I just look at you and go, weirdo? You know, I mean, it's, just, it's kind of the same. Everybody has these, these different mentalities. We have these different expressions of ourselves. What are we denying ourselves by just automatically making these judgments? You know, tattoos are great. Tattoos are horrific. I personally don't like tattoos. I just don't like them just on my body. I could care less what you do on your body. But I heard an interview with this guy. He had a total face tattoo. And it changed my perception. He said that he started becoming tattooed everywhere because it took the focus off of him and put it on his tattoos and then nobody could see who he was. And I thought that was fascinating. It started making me think a lot different because I remember when I was younger and, you know, hiring all these thousands of employees that I've had. Um, if you had a neck tattoo, I instantly thought, no, nope. <laughs> see it. I didn't want to know. I didn't want to know your qualifications. I didn't care. I thought by placing that stupid judgment that I was right. Well, I think I was wrong. And that's part of our life, our journey, our walk through this path is to start catching ourselves and being self-aware. And I think we all would want to have less judgment and try to relate the best we can with others so we can understand them, so we can have a richer, more full, beautiful life. And censorship, we really separate ourselves with this in a big way. Your ideas and your thoughts are different than mine. You just need to shut up. You need to be canceled. I don't like you. This is happening all over the place right now in a big way. And every time this has also happened in human history, it has always led to the destruction of the country very quickly. The truth is always going to surface. Let people say whatever the hell they want. We do have a First Amendment, but it is quickly being taken away. The bad guys are always the ones who want to stop the freedom of speech. It's always been that way, and it probably will continue to always be that way. We do not benefit collectively, all of us, or individually, if we can't hear the ideas of everybody. Even if they upset us or hurt our feelings. Like, we need our feelings hurt. Like, it's okay. It's okay to have our feelings hurt. We don't need to go cry to Mama. Mama, he hurt my feelings. Rick, he, he said something and Mama didn't like it. He needs to be canceled. I mean, that is crazy. It's craziness. We all have this, man. We have these judgments, these fears, these anxieties, because, you know, those people are weird. They're different from me. But we all have the same thing. We're all humans. We all have fears. We all have anxieties. We all want to be liked. We all want to be around people that we enjoy. We all want those things. So how does it benefit us from automatically labeling everybody without first getting to know their character? Because once you know the character, you can make up your own mind, right? That guy does not do what he says he's going to do, so I probably don't want to trust him or be around him. That's just what it, that's what it is. If they are great stand-up people, you know, maybe I want to be their friend. You know, we can shrink these divisions. We can have solutions. Maybe we should just start by every time we just snap to that judgment and go, what are my similarities to that dude? Like, what, what, what are we similar on? before I start just jumping to all these crazy other things that I've been brainwashed to believe. How about just have some empathy, some compassion. When we catch ourselves making these snap judgments, just say, hey, <sighs> maybe just that. Maybe I just need to take a break. Maybe I just need to stop. How about not being a self-centered ass? <laughs> that, would, that, would be, that would go a long way, right? A long way. Because I know every time I've been judgmental and it's because I was being a self-centered, you know, jackass. It didn't make any sense. It just didn't make any sense. We can, and I think we are. There is this, this bubbling of something happening 
not only in places like this, but around the world where people are starting to talk about all of these topics that help us become more self-aware, that help us create true, meaningful relationships and not all this division that we see everywhere. It is happening, but really small. And we're going to hit this bell curve where we're going to practice being more self-aware. It's going to happen. And it happens just like all of us sitting here, just one person at a time. That's what it is. So if this resonated with anybody, especially at home, you people sitting on the couch, I know you're close by, so just come on out. I appreciate you watching. And we're here every Sunday at 1.15. And I love y'all. Thank y'all for listening.